Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to be going over how to create a web server using Nginx. Uh, Nginx is an alternative to Apache, Apache being one of the more popular uh, web servers. Nginx is becoming more popular though. It's better in terms of performance, it takes less memory and under high loads it does faster, but it's also easier to configure, so that's why I've kind of migrated most of my stuff over to it. Uh, today we're going to be going over how to install it. I've got a virtual machine all ready to go. So let's get to it. Uh, so this is a stock install of Debian 7. Uh, it's still beta right now, but it's frozen, so it's fairly stable. So just install nginx, nginx. So it installs pretty quickly, and uh, it's not running yet, so we'll get that running. Okay, so we have four worker processes and one parent process. The first thing we're going to do to this is tweak it a little bit for performance. Uh, you have to choose the number of processes that it spawns. So if you are running a server that goes kind of under a high load, you're going to want to set the number of worker processes to the same number of CPUs that you have. So if this were a high load system, I would set it to two worker processes. The default is four, but under low load, I just set it to one. So the config file is slash etc slash nginx slash nginx.conf and I'm just going to set it to 1 for now. So, now we're going to restart it, and we see those changes have taken effect. So, we've basically got it installed right now. Uh, the second thing, if you want to host PHP files with uh, Nginx, you're going to need to install one more thing and that's uh, php5-fpm. So we'll get that installed. And now you'll notice we have a uh, second daemon running called php-fpm. And it spawns two child processes. And if you have a lot of traffic coming to your system, uh, you're going to want to leave this alone. If you have a very low amount of traffic, you can edit this file. So slash etc slash php5 fpm pool.d and then triple w dot conf. So pm equals dynamic here. I'm going to set it to on demand and then save it and then you can restart the daemon. Alright, and then after that uh, you'll notice it doesn't spawn any child processes. Right now, this will function a little bit slower, but uh, it's not noticeable under a low traffic kind of website, like a personal one or even a small forums or whatever. But uh, it takes a little less memory and it spawns less processes. The HTOP looks cleaner a little bit. So, yeah, that's how uh, to set up PHP. Now we're going to get into the configs of it a little bit. For the testing, I am going to be using my uh, actual server, which already has Nginx installed on it. So, first of all, I'm going to pull up the config and scroll all the way down. And at the bottom, up above this mail stuff, unless you're using mail, you can just clear out all this mail config at the bottom. But here it says include. Uh, what I usually do is I just delete these two lines and I start configuring right here. Uh, that might not be the, uh, I don't know, you can, it's just the way I like to do it because everything goes in one file, so it's easier to kind of manage if you're the only one managing it. This is typically easier. So we have one uh, server group, and we're going to add listen80. That says to listen on port 80, which is standard, and then server name. And then you're going to do space underscore 
and then semicolon for the end of line. Uh, call it semicolon so it's the default server and I'll get into that a little later when I do uh, some info on virtual hosting. Next, location. That's going to be the root of the uh, site. And we're going to put that in slash test slash a. Right, and then next, index. And that's whatever you want uh, the server to autocomplete to. So like google.com slash index dot whatever. Uh, you don't actually have to type index because the web server automatically completes it for you. So this should give us a basic config for uh, hosting. So I'm going to restart it. And then we're going to add a file. So call this a new document index.htm and call it test. And see it works. So that's the default site, no plugins, no anything. Next, um, auto indexing. So let's say we don't have any index files. It'll give you 403 forbidden. Uh, this can make it a little bit easier sometimes if you're uh, trying to share files or something. Um, yeah. Or you just want, you know, a listing of files or, you know, whatever. Uh, under the location, you're going to add auto index space on. And then restart it again. And then that will uh, automatically index all the files that are in whatever folder uh, you're navigating to. So if we create new folder, that'll work too. So you can just browse around if you enable auto indexing. The next thing I'm going to go over is proxying because that's pretty easy given the setup we have right now. So on my server on port 4200 is a login terminal. This is a cool tool called Shell in a Box. And it's definitely worth checking out if you have a server because it allows for easy access to a login terminal. But uh, well, one, it's not encrypted, so it's not HTTPS, and two, it's on port 4200. And let's say I wanted to have it on a standard port, but uh, I already have my web server listening there, so that causes problems. You can add a proxying rule in here. So under location slash, add another location. And under here, you're going to want to add a rule for proxy. Uh, and that's going to redirect all connections coming in to this uh, folder on the web server to localhost on the server, port 4200. So let's give that a try. Uh, slash sh box and it worked so see we're connecting on port 80 and all the uh, redirecting to port 4200 is being done actually on the server and you don't have to redirect that to things on that same server you can redirect to say and you know any server you want you could uh, you know redirect to Google or yeah or anything so that's proxying still not encrypted so I'm going to go over now is the uh, configs for HTTPS. So say you have a uh, SSL certificate installed on your server. So you're going to listen on port 443. 
uh, still the default server name SSL on all right and then you're gonna do SSL certificate and the second thing you're gonna do is uh, SSL certificate key and once you have these three new rules installed and you've changed to port 443 or technically any port but 443 is default you should have SSL running on your system uh, that assumes that of course like me uh, these are the locations of my keys you're gonna obviously want to replace this with the uh, location of your keys and uh, since I'm using the IP instead of the uh, domain name it's broken but yeah so if you use the correct domain name uh, you now have HTTPS running on Nginx and it's pretty easy to set up so I'm now going to delete these three rules and change this back to regular HTTP and then I'm gonna get into vhosting so I've done a little reconfiguration and uh, I've stripped out the proxy rule and I've made two instances of uh, server server instances. Uh, this first one is basically the same slash test slash a right here is a and uh, the second one same port but the name is example.org and that goes to slash test slash b and what I've actually done is in my host file patched example.org so that it uh, points to this server So I'm going to call this uh, server A and make a copy of it in server uh, the B folder. Just you know, for a quick example, A has a folder called server A, B has a folder called server B. I just restarted the server, so let's give this a try. A and that's the default server. But if we go to example.org, it goes to B. So this is useful if you're hosting multiple sites and you have multiple domain names uh, and you want to point them all at one server, you can do that. Next, I'm going to go over how to configure PHP on Nginx. So this works if you installed PHP-FPM on the uh, server already. So within that one server instance, you're going to add another location. So here's the second location I created. Uh, it basically says to pass anything that's .php, pass it to the FPM PHP 5 processor. Uh, you, you can just copy this rule, except remember to change test slash a to the same thing as your root. And uh, you should be all set to run PHP at this point. So here, uh, server a, I've added a PHP file. And what it does is just prints hello world to the web page. And you can see here it works. So that's a uh, basic introduction to Nginx, everything that I think will be relevant for a kind of average system. Don't forget to like and comment. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.